equipas e vão ter que trabalhar como equipa. In Lisbon, some of Portugal's most damaged dependent people are trying to put their lives back together. Deixem a corda e vir. One step at a time. E agora é que corre apanhar a corda e salta. This is a physiotherapy class for heroin and cocaine users where they relearn basic skills like skipping as part of their rehabilitation. Agora tenta lá passar assim só por cima de si, acorda. Primeiro só por cima de si. Não é, não vai nada, vai conseguir pelo menos uma vez. And statistically, there's a far greater chance they'll recover here than almost any other place in the world. That's because in Portugal, drug addiction rarely kills anyone. Não, ele ganhou, é verdade. People arrive here and they are wounded. Psychologist Sandra Simoche oversees programs at the Typus Rehab Clinic, programs that help people rediscover joy in small things and learn to love their bodies again. We deal with them in a new way. We uh, build new relationships with them, and that is very uh, important. In all of Portugal, fewer than 30 people a year now die from drug overdoses. In British Columbia alone, hundreds die every year, and the province has struggled for decades to save lives. In 2016, after the lethal opioid fentanyl turned up, there were more than 900 deaths, creating a public health emergency and a new urgency for solutions. Arguably, no place in the world has had as much success dealing with addictions and overdoses as Portugal. Its system emphasizes harm reduction, treatment and rehabilitation. And at the center of it is the idea that drug use is a health problem, not a crime. All drugs here, from marijuana to heroin, have been decriminalized. Drug traffickers are still hunted down and prosecuted, but if you're caught using, you won't be sent to jail or get a criminal record or even end up in the justice system. Sim. Instead, you might have to appear before Nuno Capes. Bruno, pode sentar aqui deste lado, só chover. Ora, 2,53 gramas de hachis, certo? He heads up what's known as Lisbon's Dissuasion Commission. We were allowed to sit in on one of its sessions. There are no suit or ties here, no gavels or gowns, just a sociologist in a sweater. This isn't a court, and Capa says he's not a judge. When I wake up in the morning and come back to work, I'm, I'm not thinking on how many fines I'm going to apply or how many people I'm going to threaten to uh, make them stop using any illicit substances. So it's fairly easy for us to focus on the health issues and what, uh, what help we can provide people in terms of those issues. Portugal's Dissuasion Commission is essentially a form of state-mandated early intervention. Bruno, vou ter que lhe repetir algumas perguntinhas, só que a Margarida já lhe está... On our visit, Capaz had a meeting with a young man named Bruno, who'd been caught with some hashish. Então, nesta altura, quando foi apanhado, com que regularidade é que estava consumindo? Fumava cerca de quatro gansas por dia. Por dia, regularmente. Ou... The punishment for him was simply a warning, along with an offer of information about treatment programs. Capaz estimates one in ten people who appear here have a serious drug problem, and for them, this visit can be the first step in getting treatment. I think what we found out in Portugal after 15 years is that using any sort of stick or any sort of threat doesn't work. If you increase the penalties for drug users, there's the usage decrease. It doesn't. The Portuguese learned that lesson in the late 1990s when enforcement was practiced as the main solution to a horrible drug crisis. The country of 10 million people had up to 100,000 addicts. That's an astounding 1% of the population that was hooked on hard drugs. Mm, around 400 uh, overdoses dead uh, every year. Desperate for change, the government turned to addictions treatment specialist, Dr. Joao Golau. You could see a uh, uh, huge uh, devastation in people. You could see people uh, walking down uh, like zombies. Golau's at the time revolutionary recommendation was to remove criminal penalties for using drugs. Portugal still doesn't sanction the sale of drugs. That's illegal. But users are not treated as criminals. It's very important because it introduced coherence 
in all the, in all the system. Okay, if it stands in the idea that we are dealing with a disease, a disease like the others, with the same dignity. Within a decade, the number of addicts in Portugal was cut in half. 90% of public money spent fighting drugs now goes towards treatment and prevention. Just 10% is spent on policing. In Canada, the most recent studies show the reverse, spending close to 70% on enforcement. So those are, those are like, to me, the absolute no-brainers. And Don McPherson of Simon Fraser University's Canadian Drug Policy Coalition he is one of Vancouver's best-known harm reduction advocates, and he's just back from his own survey of how Portugal practices treatment. You know, the profound thing about the, you know, the decriminalization piece is that they sent a strong message to everybody, the public. Uh, it's politically supported that this is first and foremost a health and social issue. So it, 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 it changed the way police deal with the situation. They, know, they, they go after traffickers. Uh, they didn't legalize uh, trafficking. Um, so that would help in Canada. In Vancouver, lethal drugs like fentanyl and the 100 times more powerful car fentanyl have contaminated the supply of heroin, sending the death toll soaring. So far, Portugal has been spared that. But McPherson says should those drugs turn up, the outreach and harm reduction already happening should put the Portuguese in a better position to cope. The cornerstone of Portugal's treatment and rehab model is now outreach and engagement. We distribute to people that uh, used to um, smoke. We connected with a team as they made their daily rounds in a derelict former industrial area in East Lisbon. Boa tarde, equipa de rua. Precisam de alguma coisa? Ines and Marta are psychology graduates. Their job is to find homeless drug addicts. They give them clean supplies so when they inject, they don't get sick. And they come to the same neighborhoods every day. Queres os toalhetes? Não, esses. Esses tens? Que as outras temos no carro. They meet the same people, they know their stories, and they provide a very human connection to the healthcare system. We met Pedro. I, I, I use a, a, a longer needle and I shoot on, on, on my leg. When we told him we were from Vancouver, that rang a bell. In Canada, I, 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 know that, I saw a, a documentary and I know there's a lot of drugs uh, on this, this, this alley on the, on the city. He told us he's also aware of how many Canadians are dying from drug overdoses. And he says he appreciates the people in Lisbon who are trying to keep him alive. Their job, it's very important and they are very brave. You know, they come here, uh, uh, help people pick up the needles. Uh, they come with no security, you know, they come alone. You know, they're very brave and it's very important. They say drug war, we say no more! In Canada, harm reduction policies from safe injection sites to the Vancouver clinic that dispenses prescription heroin have been pushed by local activists and implemented against a backdrop of legal uncertainty. The result is a patchwork where Vancouver has many outreach programs, but other Canadian towns and cities have very little. In Portugal, though, help for drug addiction is as intrinsic to universal health care as hospital beds. So is treatment. This is a mobile methadone van, one of several in Lisbon that cover the city, bringing treatment to heroin addicts where they live and work. I am Elvira. I am 50 years old. And uh, I'm very happy with this program because it changed my life. Elvira Ferreira showed up while we were there. Today I, I'm, I, uh, I'm cleaning. I uh, work cleaning. Sometimes 
I'm uh, near this one, sometimes I'm near the another one, I go there. So it's, um, it's easy to, to get the, the methadone. Methadone is a commonly prescribed substitute for heroin. It eases withdrawal symptoms without causing the high. Well, I feel okay. I feel okay. I do my life normally. I clean my house, I uh, take care of my grandchildren, I work. I'm okay. I don't need to, to, to go to buy the drugs anymore. Methadone treatment is practiced widely, including in Canada. But what's striking is the effort the Portuguese system puts into getting it to people and taking the stigma out of using it. Despite the success stories, though, it's also evident that Portugal's system is being strained. For example, there are fewer spaces for recovering addicts in this art therapy program. Europe's financial crisis took a heavy toll here. People lost jobs. Alcoholism and addictions increased. And funding for programs was cut. Here at the Typus Clinic, a staff of 165 was reduced to 63. The government here used to spend generously helping addicts make the final transition from rehab to jobs and supporting themselves. But much of that money was cut. This flower greenhouse, about an hour outside Lisbon, received grants to employ recovering addicts. Não voltar uh, às drogas such as Joao Grosso. He's one of five workers here, but there used to be 13. He says the program provides valuable work experience and references. I comecei por por fazer tratamento aqui na Dia Nova de de um ano, 12 meses. e pronto, com a ajuda da equipa consegui refazer a minha vida e e e começar a procurar trabalho quando acabei o programa and we are still suffering from those cuts. Manager Rui Martins fears Portugal's success story could be at risk. We know that only treating people is not enough. If you don't provide them the skills, the job opportunity, uh, housing um, possibilities, uh, the demotivation that comes after the treatment because of not having those uh, security um, facilities and environments might let them again to start using. Financial and uh, mostly the social crisis had some impacts in, in the situation. Joao Golao laments that the drug treatment system he helped create is under such strain. Nonetheless, he says it does prove that treating drug use like a health problem is the only way forward. You have our experience, okay? It worked. There is still lots of drug use in Portugal, but not as much misery and not the death. Instead, there's now understanding that progressive public policy can turn around a disaster. Chris Brown, CBC News in Lisbon.